Back, episode 57 of Sketching Up. We're going, we're getting up there. We're past the half century mark. We're almost at the century mark. Episode 57 of sketching up it is thanksgiving week so happy thanksgiving to everybody that will be celebrating um hope you have a good meal and stuff like that i'm joined by my co-host as always kyle scott kyle how's it going how you doing and kyle what are you thankful for i'm doing doing that thing we were talking about off by the way i see i see you doing that we're talking about this thing and now he's doing it on camera Nice grills. No yeah, one listening ugly. has any clue what we're talking about. <laughs> Zero. But it's fine. But it's fine. It right, what are you thankful joke. for? And what, 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 oh, how's it going? What are you thankful for? It's going wonderful. I'm okay. Um, what I'm thankful for? I am thankful for my wonderful co-host, who is also one of my best buds. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's cold out tonight, but the warmth, that warmth will warm my heart for the rest of the night. It is cold. I It's about 10 degrees. It no, it's probably not 10 degrees. With the wind chill, it's probably about 10 degrees. But that warmth, that warmth will get me going. I'm also, I'm also thankful that we get to do this. And you know what the best part is? We get to do this, but then outside of this, we also just get to talk non-podcast stuff. And like, I know, right? be friends really? outside of it. And it doesn't like interfere. It's great. It's great. I, I absolutely love all. it. I am also thankful that we are we were able to continue this. I mean, like there was a period where I was like, I think sketching sketching up's done for. We're we're just too busy and we just can't get together. And then look at us, look at us, we got it together. Look at us, look at us, look at us, look at us. Um, what else am I thankful for other than the basics? You know, family, friends, yada yada yada. Um, I'm thankful that there's some really good comic books out there right now that I'm able to read. I'm not thankful is that I started reading Rogue Sun and now I can't find it anywhere, but I am thankful mm. that there's a lot of good series to read because that's always great. I'm also grateful that I live in a time where I'm a huge Marvel fan and Marvel's like the biggest thing on the planet. So I guess I can go on with all these little ones, but you guys don't want to hear all that. You don't want to hear all that. But <clears throat> what you do probably want to hear about is our, it's going to be spoiler free. We will have a full review very soon. But I'll give you quit my quick opinion on Black Go Panther ahead. Wakanda Forever. Okay, well, I don't want. I'm not going to spoil anything. Kyle hasn't seen it yet, um, so you don't have to worry about getting spoiled hearing this. If you haven't seen it yet, um, that's fine. You're just missing out on the best movie of the phase so far, um, mm. which is not hard to do. It's not hard to do. The phase has been pretty weak, but Wakanda Forever was an excellent movie like unbelievably good there were parts i'll say this they mcu'd a lot of it like there were parts that didn't need to be in the movie that were in the movie i think and we all know iron heart is in the movie i don't think iron heart needed to be in the movie i don't think it really pushed the story along at all they just kind of added it to to introduce her character which i understand like you want to introduce the character in wakanda forever because you know that movie is going to be a hit so we want to bring that next character in. Um, but I don't think she needed to be in the movie. Um, overall, excellent movie. For what they had, you know, with, with Chadwick Boseman passing away and having to continue the legacy of the movie without having the Black Panther itself was t- a tough and tall order. I think the way they handled it went so well. I was on the verge of tears in the very beginning. It's so, like, it hits you right it hits you right in the soul. It, hurt, it hits you hard right in the beginning with the way they deal with the, the loss of Bozeman. But, like, it hits you hard, mm-hmm. and it's really good. So um, I overall give it I, – I think it's it's the best one of the, the um, phase so far. I do not think it's better than the first one. Like I said, it's a little long. They MCU'd a lot of it. But the way they introduced things, the way they did things, the way they told the story was just so good. If they took the MCU part out of it, honestly, the, like the things they tried to add into it, if they took that out and it made it like 40 minutes shorter, it would have been the perfect movie. Really mm. would have. But excellent movie. Definitely go see it. It's worth the money to go see. Um, that's best, probably the best review you can get is, is it worth the money to go see? Because movies are so expensive these days. But I think it is worth the money to go see it. Excellent movie. 
Um, and I'm glad that that's how you wrap it up with that movie. Cause that was very, very good. It definitely left out some stuff that I thought it was going to add. I think it left out a lot of the predictions. A lot of people had on it. And I think it had some missed opportunities become because of that, but um, yeah, it was great. And there's no, there's a mid credit scene, but no end credit scene. And that's, I think something that should be in every review of a Marvel movie from now on. Is there one that I have to stay till the end of the credits for, because if not, I'm out. But you want to stay for the mid credit. There's a very, very touching, powerful mid credit, but there is no end credit, so you can you can dip out after the mid credit scene. So that's my quick, spoiler free, um, Wakanda forever. Just kind of telling you, it was it good or not, and should I see it? It was good, and yes, you should see it if you're on the fence. So that's about it. Any, any questions? Over there, any any questions, comments, concerns? No? None. None. Good. So Kyle's going to go see it, and then we'll really go into it, and we'll really talk about it. But for, So we're, we'll be late to the game, but when are we not with review? You know, movie reviews, there's two, there's enough of them. There's enough. If when there's a, a movie that we're going to re- – like that we know is not going to get reviewed, like um, like we when we did uh, Chip and Dale, like, come on. We're going to, we're going to do those movies. We did weird Al, like we'll do those movies, but the the MCU movies, there's a million podcasts that break that stuff down and we're not one of them. We like that stuff, but we're not breaking it down. We're not joining. We're not joining that cult of breaking it down. Mm -hmm. But today we have a really fun episode planned. Um, Before I get into that, Kyle, is there any, anything you want to discuss or talk about or anything you saw recently you wanted to talk about? I, I, I always come in hot with this stuff and I, I feel like I don't, I don't ask you if you've seen anything. Um, have I watched any, I'm watching this new anime called, well, before I do that, especially we're speaking about anime, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you just one thing since we was like slightly talking about stuff that we've enjoyed this year. My hero academia this year has been on point. Like on point. Like right now they're at this big fight and it's like so wild. It's great. Like they had a whole my villain academia arc last season. It was so wild. Like this arc is great. Last arc was great. Last season was great. Like it's a lot of good. It's what a time to be alive for anime fan. Cause there's a lot of good anime that came out this year. Like, oh God, what was it called? Um, God, why did I just blank? Well, um, Parallel World Universe, I'm just finished up. I just caught up on this one called Beast Tamers that I really like. Um, what was the other one I watched? Oh, that that um, the Jujutsu Kaisen movie, Demon Slayer movie. But th- that's another episode. Another day. <laughs> we, we do have to have that episode where you could talk anime with somebody just because it's just... It's got to happen. And I, I have people that have asked, like, do you talk anime? I want to get on. And I'm like, oh, I don't. But I know somebody that will with you, my Let's co-host go. of the show. So Let's go. Um, that episode's coming. I think we tried to do it once. We Maybe did. it just didn't work. I guess yeah, it just I didn't think, work. I don't remember the episode yeah, ever airing. I think I was, like, coaching. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But that's coming soon. So check out those animes. I, I again, I say it all the time. I want to get into it, but... I just don't – I can't just sit and watch TV. Kyle, you know I have enough problems sitting down and recording these episodes. I can't just sit down and watch TV. You know so what? It's, it's tough for me. You know what one of my homeboys does? He he um, he has like a little like bike treadmill, and he just sits and watches it and watches it while he's on the bike. And mm-hmm. it, maybe That's, that might I, help you. I do the same thing. I do that, but I don't – I usually like – I have a bike, so I have a stationary bike. I run a lot, but when I want to just kind of like chill – I go on the stationary bike and I play like Madden or something for an hour on the stationary bike. Another thing I've done a lot is when I'm home from work or, or working remotely, I should say, is I go on the stationary bike and I work on the stationary bike itself. I put a desk up there and I just work on there. So I do, I do the same thing. I just, again, watching stuff, I don't know. I just don't have the attention span. I'm one of those kids that grew up and couldn't have the attention span because, uh, <laughs> because of the shows we're about to talk about today. So uh, today, our big topic is we're going to go through uh, the top five shows we watched as kids that we probably should not have watched as kids. Um, Did we we say we're going to keep this? 
I was going to say, are we going to keep this exclusive to cartoons or are we just going top five? Just in general. See, I think, let me, let me say something about movies. I think movies is a completely different list. Okay. I think you can have a top five of just movies. So we might have to save the Boy. movies for a different one. I was just thinking shows, but, the, but these shows, I don't know how exactly we got to explain this. Cause like, if you watch like CSI as a kid, like obviously that's one, but like these are shows that. like, like that's why I was thinking cartoons, like, cause cartoons like, okay. usually are geared towards kids, but uh, we have, I, I think I, I could think of five off the top of my head, I think actually. So for people that are out of the know or you're, this is your first episode ever watching, um, one thing I do have to say is I do everything off the top of my head. Kyle does a lot of research nowadays, but when it comes to cartoons, I, I have a good amount of knowledge. So it's usually goes pretty well, but I usually get all this stuff together and I say, this is what we should do. And then I end up doing something else. I'm like, Oh yeah, I was supposed to come up with five things, but I think it still usually works out pretty well. I, I, I do a pretty good job of, of remembering things and this is my, this is my space. So but I do everything off the top of my head and Kyle does a bunch of research. So Kyle's will be like, you're, you're going to pull out stuff that I'm going to be like, Oh yeah, that, and I'm going to pull out the obvious ones probably here. But what we're going to do here, how we're going to, let me explain how we're going to do this. We're going to come out and say, I don't know, we'll say a bunch of shows. And then from the shows we say, we will rank them as the top five. So we're going to say, we could say like 15, we could say eight, we could say a hundred, but by, out of the, what we say, we were going to make a top five. So we're going to go top five, cartoons that we watched as kids that we shouldn't have. I think that's the best way to do this. So uh, you say, Dan, but I think this is going to be, um, I think this isn't going to be a bad list at all. We might have to look up a little bit. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do off the, what we have already through research and, and knowledge. And then we can like go and actually look um, up some just to make sure we don't miss maybe not i'd actually like that when we miss some because it makes us feel like oh like how did i miss this show you know what i mean i like that so all right so uh do you want to write this down or you want me to write this down i have my other computer right here i need a pen um i have a pen do you want me to write this down or you're gonna write it um you can write it okay i'll write it i have a pen I have my notepad that has dates on it. Um, and I am writing now. Uh, and all right. So do you want to start this off? Or do you want me to start this off? Because there's one very, very, uh, there's a couple of very obvious answers, but there's one that's going to be on do there the, no matter what. Do the obvious answers. Okay. I'll say one, you say the other. How about that? Okay. Okay. The obvious one I was going to say is South Park. 100%. And then the obvious one you're going to say is boondocks. Ooh, I was actually thinking you're going to go in another direction. I oh. would think the other really obvious one would be oh, family guy, family guy, but yeah, and, but boondocks is also on there. So let's go yeah. one by one on those three. Cause those are going to definitely be in the top five. Um, 100%. So, um, I, I can go first talking about South Park and then if you want to jump in, but I definitely South Park is what I grew up on. I literally grew up on South Park. Like I watched it when I was very young all the way up until now. I still watch. I mean, first of all, it's crazy. It's still going on. Like I think South Park came out when I was three and like now I'm almost 30 and it's still going like it's crazy to think that it's really crazy mm -hmm. to think that. Um, but I watched it a lot. And I think it was, it's funny because you would think like, oh, that's, you know, why would your parents let you watch that? But my parents, like, they would let me watch it, but they would also be able to tell, like, they would know, first of all, they would know if something bad's coming up or something like that, that I shouldn't watch. But like, they also were able to explain, like, it's just a show, like, or like explain why something happened. And South Park, honestly, out of all the shows that I think I've watched in my life, has a very good lessons in it. It's a very dumb show, but it has very good lessons in it. So South Park is something I grew up on, still watch it to this day. And, and I don't think I should have been watching it as a kid because you watch it now as an adult, you're like, whoa, I watched that as a kid. But also some of the stuff goes over your head anyway. So, but the killing doesn't. <laughs> so um, you want to talk about your South Park experience? Or you want to go on to the next oh, one? Oh, I mean, South Park, Okay, so South Park was one of those where, so here's my my mom's rule on a lot of stuff was, not everything, 
but on like stuff like at least on shows when I was younger. Um, since I had like a lot of older siblings, I got to see a lot of stuff early. So she was like, as long as you're not watching that stupid stuff in front of me, I'm cool. So <laughs> the only time my mom actually banned me from watching South Park. Now this is going to show how I grew up was when they made fun of Jesus. <laughs> but that's like every episode. Yo, it was but one in particular. It. it was like one in particular. They made fun of Jesus, man. Like I grew up in only this church, so that's like super taboo. Yo, like my mom went nuts. Like <laughs> then called the Didn't preacher. It? They talked about me in church. Like it was wild. Like they talk it was about wild. They, they talk about Jesus all, like make fun of Jesus yeah. a lot in South no, Park. He's a character of, on the show. They make fun of everybody. Yeah, they do. So they like, really do. But, but I feel like I feel like Jesus is more than the other ones. Actually, I was very like deeply into South Park, especially when I was like first when I was first getting into being a creative person. Like now at my job, I literally am a creative like director basically. Um or I help with creative decisions and like I would listen to their commentaries cause they're very smart with the way they do things, mm -hmm. you know? And, and they literally say like, we have Jesus in these shows, like the way he's portrayed and the reason he's a main character to show that like, you can make fun of Jesus all you want, but don't touch any of these other ones. And that happened with the one, the band ones with Muhammad because mm -hmm. they're like, like we can literally show, jesus being pooped on by people but if we even show the image of muhammad it gets cut off the air to just show how like like yeah yeah show how the tv industry works basically See, and how hypocritical they can be that's the word i was looking for i also like how um it was one where it was like a super religious episode they had it was like when like they went down to hades and with the devil or whatever and he was, and there was, and it was like the <clears throat> people's first time that was down there. And then the dude was like, um, and the correct answer is Mormonism. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> y'all feel dumb, right? They, and they, I, was I know there, exactly I was what like, scene you're talking about. They, they're all trying to go to heaven. They're all in hell. They're like waiting mm -hmm. and, and they're like, what religion? Yeah. What religion should I have followed? Uh, Mormonism. Mormons were the correct answer. Like, to, and it's funny because it, it, it's like making fun of like that. There's a correct answer. Like, mm -hmm. like, oh, the correct answer is actually this. Like you guys all picked wrong. So you're here. Yo, like, that's so clever. Hilarious. That's so funny. It is though. It was hilarious. Like when I seen that, I died. And like I, they go, I, I love South Park, but I like to South go up and in on Mormons. Oh, dog. I thought they were like Mormons, crazy. weren't they? No, no, no. They're from Colorado, which has a lot uh, of Mormons, but they uh, are okay, not. Okay, that's Mormon. what it was. Yeah, that that surrounding blanket in uh, the Pacific Northwest area, around like uh, where um, Utah is, you'll get a lot. Yeah. I, there were a lot of Mormons when I lived out in Spokane. I, I, there, actually, I was I was practicing I was practicing baseball once. I was out, you know, running drills and stuff like that. And two Mormons came up and and tried to get me to go to their church. And I was like, I, literally, I was like, listen, guys, you seem like cool people, but I'm completely not interested. <laughs> and, All right, bye. Like, let me get in there. I'll I'll throw a ball with you and tell you about and tell you about Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm good man. There. Thanks for the invite. See you later. But. Yeah, you get that whole area. They they're like that. But they're another another reason I really liked South Park is and we're talking about a stupid cartoon comedy, but they they did so much research in everything they did. Like they didn't just make fun of something like another show we're gonna talk about in a minute. Like they would just make they wouldn't just make fun of it and kind of make up what they're doing. Like if they were making fun of something, they like dove deep into that subject to make sure it's as correct as possible. And I always thought that was like so it was so cool that like you would do that much research and still can make it that funny. And like, they're just very smart at what they do. And the show that I was just talking about that doesn't do that, that we also talked about is family guy. They will make fun of something, but it'll just be a very stupid joke that probably isn't correct. Um, but we'll get more of that into that in a second. So I went first on South park. I'll let you go first on family guy. If you'd like. Okay. 
So Family Guy, you know, I watch this a lot. I watch Family Guy just as much as I watch Boondocks, but we'll talk about Boondocks later. Um, <clears throat> so Family Guy, to me, it came off real strong. Like it came off real. I like I loved it. I was watching every episode. I was in it, and then it just fell off. Like it just fell off because it just it just kept rinse and repeat. And unlike like to me, South Park is one of those few shows that stayed relevant only because mm-hmm. they were smart about it and they did the research and everything was current events. So it changed along with society. Slick, they grew up with us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they did. Yeah, so they're like, it's like, they're like in their mid fifties now. They're like twenty yeah, when like, they started. Pretty funny. Like I know we're I know we was I know we're done with South Park, but let's my last my No last no thing. go back. You for comparisons, please go oh, back. Okay. It's fine. Like, okay, like for the fact of let's go with the Ninja Stars episode mm-hmm. of South Park. Remember how hilarious that was? How like but even though it was such a stupid episode. It makes sense because that's what elementary school kids would do if they had they real ninja stars. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, play with them. Yeah, they and really throw them at each other thinking they fake. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's like, it makes sense because you're like, how would have did that at 10? And it's relatable and it's funny while Family Guy was just dumb and outrageous. Like, outside of the shock factor, you're just like, oh, like, like, uh, what was it? When, um... Like when Lois slept with Bill Clinton or something, like when yeah. Lois cheated on Peter, then Peter got to sleep with his with his mother in law. I was like, "Come on, man!" Outside of it, that is your mother in law, and then it's a whole little porn fetish in America. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. really kind of weird that you want yeah. your your wife's mom. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Family Guy definitely fell off very hard, and 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 it's pretty easy to pinpoint when it was. It was kind of like Brian died. I think it was. But, uh, that's when it died, that. died for me. That's when it died, died. I I could tell you the exact episode. I fell off a of Family Guy. Um, okay. I, I didn't really watch at this time, but when I saw this episode, I was just done with the show. Um, there was an episode where Quagmire's sister, I think it is, is like, like sexually assaulted and abused by like an abusive boyfriend or something like that. And it that part, like I didn't, I didn't really enjoy, but the part that really threw me, like just kind of turned me off of it was all the stuff they got wrong on how to deal with that. And like, there's a part where uh, Joe, who's a cop was like, Oh, I didn't see anything. So I can't do anything as a cop, which is completely untrue. Like if you think something's happening as a police officer, you are, you can go in and, and do something. And they just did stuff so wrong. And then they're like, well, the only way we could solve this is killing the guy. And they like kill the guy. So like, I, I was just like, this episode's just so poorly done and it's in such bad taste trying to get cheap shock laughs. And I just kind of fell off from that. I really didn't. I really. I haven't watched Family Guy ever since seeing that episode. Now going into that episode, I didn't really watch it anymore. Anyway, I, Family Guy at its peak to me was when I was in middle school. That's when it was. I remember at lunch period, me and a group of friends would sit at the computer and watch Family Guy clips on YouTube, like constantly. That mm-hmm. was when it was at its peak for me, like. And then, and going into high school, I was still kind of into it, but I wasn't as into Family Guy. Like I wasn't watching every Sunday. Like I, like in, in in middle school, I watched every Sunday. I watched when the movie came out. I watched every episode. I used to go on on like um like LimeWire and BearShare and all that stuff and download episodes to watch them. Yeah, that's Ooh, how you that's how deep we're. Computer age too. Yeah, Boy, yeah, man, we, we all did. We, 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 I went on there. I would download Same with South Park. I downloaded South Park episodes too. And I would have them so I can watch them later on and stuff like that. And, uh, I, and, and then it kind of just started to fall off as you got older. I think, like you said, South Park matured with us as well. And like mm-hmm. it grew with us, like the show itself would grow where family guy never grew. It just kind of tried to do the same jokes over and over and over. And then when it, the jokes weren't landing anymore, they did something for shock value something that would make news like Brian dying, like sh- jokes that just didn't land, but they could get shock laughs, like things like that. And that's just not the best way to do it. Like South park literally changed their entire format where instead of doing week to week, they are now like a full seasons, of storyline. They take one storyline, they spread it through a full season. 
Mm-hmm. Like they actually changed their entire format. So this has become a argument of which one like <laughs> do you pick? Oh. I, we're both on the oh, same yeah, yeah, side, yeah. but like it's funny how it became that. Like just trying to talk about like why these were on there, but I I'm right there with you. I think it fell off, and South Park definitely reigned supreme in my eyes. All right, but I'm gonna tell you what's near and dear to my heart, though. Go ahead. It's one of those where it's like I understand, like South Park is my number one favorite show. Mm-hmm. But the show that is a little closer to my heart is Bo- Go ahead. is Boondocks, man. Mm-hmm. I love Boondocks. Boon, I'm not gonna lie to you. A hundred years, like three hundred, like a thousand years from now, when we're all dead, I hope Boondocks survives so they can see how Black America was. Like yo, like I'm not gonna lie to you. That is the perfect portrayal, at least perfect fictional portrayal of how black people in America are. And it's so true to this day still. And it's hilarious because it's so true. You want to know why? Now, now I'm coming from a complete outside perspective, right? Yeah. But I think that boondocks was so successful because it made fun of the mainstream of what people thought like mm-hmm. hip hop culture and, and black culture was. And Yo. in reality, most people Don't thought of like it in, in the way the boondocks portrayed it. And that's why I think yeah. it was so successful. Like yeah. that's how most people thought. And, 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 but the mainstream put it out this way, you know, like, I think the first one is the R Kelly one. I think that's no, episode first, one. No, episode one was the don't scare the white people. It was oh, the where, where they go to the rich house. Yeah, they go to the was, they go to yeah, the rich house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, what's, yeah, what's the yeah. what's the rich dude's no. name? Ed Wunsler. Ed Wunsler, yeah. No, because the son's Ed Wunsler the third. No, yeah. no, but the fact that bro, we all know that one that one white boy that think he's getting yeah. That thing's like, he's, it is he's, so and he's always the scariest one. He's always the scariest one because he's crazy. Because he's no. crazy. Okay, okay. Just think about this, right? They hit every single stereotype, right? So yeah. they got the cranky old parent, right? That whoops mm-hmm. kids all day, right? Well, that the grandparent, grandparent, like grandparent, the grandparent, grandparent, but grandparent, granddad. parent, same thing. Granddad, like the parent, the parental figure. That hates everything that's going on now, right? Yeah. Then you got R.I.P. R.I.P. Man. Sorry, guys. I got a little. It gets cold down south. Yeah. Oh yeah. Struggling. I'm just telling you how it's ten degrees. Yeah, bro. (laughs) You got that. It's about thirty. But you know, it's he's saying it's cold. I'm wearing an. I'm literally wearing a sweatshirt, and he's saying it's cold by him. All you have to understand is it is 30 outside, but my apartment is about 77, 78. So I'm pumping the heat right now. That's why I'm wearing short sleeve. But yeah, I, as I'm I 72, that, so I agree with that. But it's still kind so, of chilly. So I have, I, I can't relate. You, so um, we're talking about granddad. Yeah, we're talking about granddad. how they have okay, all Okay, so it's all stuff. the stereotypes, right? So then you got... Then you always got like the Malcolm X revolutionary black, which is Huey. You got yeah. the, the stereotypical ignorant black, which is Riley. Mm-hmm. You got Tom, who's who's like the Oreo, right? Then you got um, Jasmine, who's kind of like, oh, what's, what's a good way? You know, like the the suburban, the suburban blacks. Okay. That they, they just, and they, like they're fascinated by the hood life but they don't really want it, but they're fascinated by it. So you see Jasmine where she's always hanging around Riley, always kind of getting into a little no, trouble she, with ja- Riley. Jas- but then, is Jasmine's but hanging then around the, Huey, isn't it? And then the well, blonde girl is the one that's with. Yeah, but you, well, yeah. They hang around, she hangs around both of them. She hangs around the she family. She hangs around the both of them. Family. Yeah. Really the entire family. But you can yeah. kind of see where she gets drawn to more of, that side and then she runs back to her little suburban house at the end of the day when stuff starts yeah. hitting the fan. Like it's yeah. great. Like it's beautiful. Like when Tom thought that his wife was gonna leave him for um Usher 
was her with a pimp yeah. name slip back. So great. Oh yes. my so god. Great. A pimp name slip back is probably that might be the peak of Cat Williams. That was the peak because of Cat, Cat Williams Williams fell off pretty hard after Yo. in those in those late two thousands. So and then he got hard. beat up by a middle schooler. That was he, that was bad. He fell off. He was down hard. here in Georgia too. He was down here in Georgia when he got beat up. That was bad. I'm sure he was. But uh, so so who let's who was your favorite character from the Boondocks? Oh, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my gosh, no, boy, you're gonna hate me, man. You're gonna hate me, man. You're gonna hate me, dog. Cause it's so stereotypical who my favorite character is. Who you think my favorite character is? I'm I'm waiting. I want to hear. Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you to say it. <laughs> I just wanted you to say it. You didn't want to say it. I love Riley, yo. Because Riley. He's funny. Yo, he's so funny. Because I'm not going to lie. When I was a kid, when I was in like, when I first learned how to cuss in like the fifth grade, my favorite word was the B word, and I talked just like Riley. You a hit, you a hit, you a hit, and you get. And I was used, boy, I used to be that. Like, and so when I see that, it's hilarious because all I see is me with the little afro. That's back when I had hair. Like, me with an afro <laughs> thinking I'm Pretty cussing perfect. everybody out. I got to go find I ha, I had the school picture, too. I got to go find it. <laughs> see you with the afro. I'm excited for that. No. Dog, I look like Professor Clump, dog. It was bad. <laughs> I don't know why my mama let me out the house with that vest that was like five sizes too big. My glasses barely fit my face. Like my my fro wasn't even combed. Like my mom set me up for <laughs> the kill, boy. Like I swear to God she did. But yeah, but I, I'm a big fan of a lot of the side like I like granddad a lot. Just oh, because I think oh he's Uncle so Ruckus funny. is my second. But Uncle Ruckus is my second favorite kid. I forgot about Uncle Ruckus. I forget about Uncle Ruckus. L last thing, Uncle Ruckus. We all know that one black person that swear they ain't black. And that's Uncle that's Ruckus. Uncle Ruckus. Yo, you know, Uncle, Uncle Ruckus. He was so popular that, uh, if you remember, um, Magruder. Yeah, Magruder, yeah Magruder. Magruder. He tried to make the Uncle Ruckus movie. But he tried to do I it through Kickstarter. It. Because the whole... It. The whole thing with the show. So if people don't, I think it's Adam Magruder. If you, if yeah, you want to look that I, yeah. up really quick to make sure, I think it's Adam Magruder is the creator of it, and he's the one that did the comic strips and everything. And in season four, he got kicked off the show, and kind of lost the royalties from it. I believe he he wasn't part of it at all. And season four is is highly known as the lowest season of the four. Dog, like it is, dog. or is it season three? No, season three it was or four. It is Aaron Magruder. 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 Aaron Magruder. I said Adam. I was very Aaron close. Aaron Magruder. But okay, he, was, he got, I think it was season four, and it's was known as four. the lowest. It was horrible. It's, yeah. It was horrible. Dog, Your granddad lost all his money, and it was just uh, bad. Like, the whole Siri thing was so weird to me. Yeah. When they made Siri jealous and, like, this mm -hmm. weird white, like, this white girl caricature. It was so weird. Like... Uh, yeah, that I, little, I was. What was not the? A fan. Um, I don't even remember most of season four. I think I watched this, like almost like. Oh, I, I, I remember the one that really made me mad, and I had to stop watching it. And I'm not gonna. Lie. Okay. I, it was the one where it was like they was at this um, amusement park that was based off of slavery, and I was like, I can't do it. Mm, I don't even remember that. Yo, it was wild. I honestly like, don't even remember that. I I. It's almost like season nine of Scrubs for me, where like oh, it's just so bad. Show. I know, yeah. but season nine where they tried to come back and do the interns thing, it's just so bad that you've watched it once and you're like, ah, I I don't need to do that again. Like that's it. I, I probably watched season four once and never I don't think I've ever watched it again. It's I, just I stopped it. it. I just I just put on the classics. You know what I'm yeah. saying? One through three. So some some really good ones, especially in seasons one and two. Uh, oh, the, my my favorite episodes are the the the, the story of Gangs Delicious and the story of Thugnificent are two of my oh favorite my episodes. 
especially oh. the Thugnificent one. I I I lo- I love how he starts as like the lo- he's ludicrous. He's literally ludicrous. Like he's literally ludicrous. like legitimately. But by the end of it, he's just a UPS delivery man. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. I, I like um, the Thug in Love was the, was hilarious. That's Gangsta Delicious, isn't it? Thug that's in the Love, and then he has Gangsta Delicious was the greatest. Hey man. I ain't gonna lie, like, okay, with the booty, booty, I know that was a thug magnificent. That's, with the that's booty, thug magnificent. Booty, booty, butt cheeks. Those booty, two are cheeks. <laughs> God, what, what, okay, what part of Homies Georgia over was Homies over hoes. Homies, Homies over hoes. Homies over hoes. Homies over hoes, man. Homies over hoes. Oh, my God. Yo, so good. Okay, I'm a quick story. What was, so, what was the other, wait, oh, okay, yeah, do your story, because I'm going to think of what the other thugnificent, there were two thugnificent songs. Um, I don't remember what the other one was, though. Oh, oh the, you just mad because you asked his old. His old. <laughs> yeah, the granddad. The granddad. <laughs> granddad. And it had Nate Whoa. Dog on it. It had Nate Dog and Snoop. Yeah. <laughs> Snoop. Dog. Like, yo, if you think about it, that was an all I think Rhymes, too. Yeah, Buster Rhymes was one of them dudes. Buster yeah. Rhymes, Snoop Dogg, and Nate. Or Snoop and Nate. That's yo, crazy. Yo, like, like Regina King was Riley and Huey. And Huey, um, yeah. John, John Witherspoon was... was granddad. Yeah. Like, dog, it was a star-studded affair. Like, there was a lot was. of people. Like, Wayne, do you remember the one where the um, Katrina, Vic, their, their family in yeah. um, New Orleans came? Oh, yeah. I'm oh gonna, I'm gonna get God. you back once my che- once my check clears. Once the yeah. check clears, it's all gonna be better once the check clears. And that check never clears. <laughs> no, it does. Remember at the end, it does. Oh, it does at the end. It does at the end. And they <laughs> doesn't lose. tell them yeah. about it though. Yeah, they did. Yo, yeah. I'm like that is just like some black folks. Freeloaders. I ain't gonna lie, man. It's it's a perfect stereotypical portrayal of how they think Black America is, and it's great because like. It's so accurate, though. In, well, in, the, on the a lot that, of levels, it's accurate. The thing that I, 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 you know, I'm not completely into that, but I love, I love the Boondocks, and I've definitely seen my yeah. fair share of of uh, of of thing, events that have happened from the Boondocks. But like, the one thing I never liked is how people wouldn't like the Boondocks but would like South Park because it's the same show. It's literally it's just the different same portrayals. Show. It's just one's That's like it. a very white portrayal of life, and one's a very black portrayal of life. It's it's literally the same show. Like South Park, obviously, is is a little more current and definitely goes up and in on a lot bigger subjects because it's been around for so long. Like, but it's the same show. Like they went mm-hmm. after R. Kelly in like episode Dog. two. They go after they went after a lot Everybody. of very big. They went after a lot of big people. So I never understood that so um so now we got the three big ones out of the way i don't mean to just move on to the next one but we, we sorry, spent like a sorry, half hour sorry. talking about the first sorry, three shows sorry. um sorry you know i love me some boondocks dog so, so i'm gonna throw two at you right okay. now i think holla one has to be on the top what'd you say i said holla at me okay i thought you said a show i was like did you say the one i was gonna say so i have four shows written down Right. Okay. I think one of them has to be in the top. To me, two of these have to be in the top. Okay. Okay. So the two I think have to be in the top are the Simpsons. Uh huh. Has to be in the top. And Futurama. I have that written down. I have that written down too. Okay. The the other two I have. One of them I don't think would be in the top five, but it was definitely one that wasn't for kids. Was C Lab twenty twenty one. I never watched that. It was on Adult Swim. It's basically if you've ever watched Archer. (laughs) That's where mm-hmm. it came from. It's the same creator and stuff like that. And American Dad, I have on there as well. Oh, I forgot about American Dad. So that's you know, that, that's that's what I have written down. Okay. Um, you, you know who I got written down that you don't? Who? And I'm happy now. Ren and Stimpy. See, you know, I don't have that written down. I was never a big Ren and Stimpy fan. Oh man, the debauchery. The debauchery. Like it was one point where like. They had the saw and they acted like they was humping on the on the wood. Yo, my mom literally oh, unplugged I, the TV and told me I, I know all about the Ren and Stimpy. And the the reason Boy. they got the MTV show is because of how raunchy it was on Nickelodeon of all places. Dog. They Dog. needed to take it off and they put it. But but yeah. I will say, wow. I never really watched Ren and Stimpy, and then I never went back to it because it Dude. was the the creator is just such a piece of garbage of a human. Uh, he. Hey, 
the show is a piece of you can tell he's a yeah. piece of garbage by how well, the show he, is, bro. He was he was grooming young women by having them intern and then like dating them. Like young young women, like in their teens. So uh, and yeah, he he's that's why you haven't seen anything from him in in forever because he was blacklisted as he should be should be in jail. <laughs> but yeah, um, bro, that's so weird. that's why I never really watched it. And then when I got to a point where I was trying to watch things that I've never watched, it never came up because I'm like, I don't need, I don't want to support this this show. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna be real with you. Ren and Ren and Stimpy was one of them shows that I know we were supposed to save this for another day. Ren and Stimpy is one of them shows that didn't age well. No, it did not. Not at all. Because, like, oh, my God. Like, I tried to watch it when we was in New Haven one time. I was, like, by myself. Mm-hmm. And I was just, like, how did how did I watch this as a kid? Well, because like, it's, it's stupid humor. And you're, like, oh, like, this is this is so fun. Like, this is something I don't get to see ever. But now you watch it as an adult and you've seen more sophisticated ways of making comedy out of, out of dumb fart jokes. And like, you're like, Oh, this is just really poorly done. Yeah. Like I, like as a kid, I thought it was funny, but I was just like, now I'm like, no, I hate Ren and Stimpy. Um, I don't have anything else. I, I mean, I had a lot of shows that like, I'm looking at my list right now. I had a lot of shows that like were like, I can name a bunch of shows that are like not when I wasn't a kid. These are supposed to be when you were kids though. So that's why. And, and I think C-Lab 2021 was about 2000. That's probably the latest one I have on there. Like when mm-hmm. they started, cause that started in 2000 Futurama started in 99 Simpsons started in 89 South Park started in 97. Um, well, Boondocks. Well, Boondocks was probably 2000 American dad. Yeah, I don't know. Probably two thousands. Yeah. Um, Oh, there is one more. I just thought about, there is yeah. one more. I just thought about, um, I don't know how big of a fan you were of it. I don't even know if it's considered a cartoon. But Robot Chicken was very big in in the household because it came on right after Family Guy. Not a fan. I detest that show. And I don't know why. I know why. I know why. I hate the animation in that show. Well, I, I hate it's, the animation. It's not, I don't think it's animated. Well, it's, it probably is, but it's supposed to be stop motion. I, I hate it. Like, what's weird is, um, what was that one show that used to come on Nick, but it shouldn't have been a kid's show either? The one that had the action figures? Like, Kabam, Kaboom? Kabam. Kablam. Yeah. Kablam. Like, Kabam. Kabam was another show. Like, Kablam, that shouldn't first have been of all, Kablam was, that's a throwback throwback. That was one of the first shows on Nickelodeon. Like, first original show. You're talking about back. action action squad now or something like that how do i remember this i can't remember what i ate for breakfast i can remember i think it's called action squad now and it was literally so i know how i can remember this i watch you know i only watch youtube documentaries as we've talked about (laughs) so kablam i watched something on kablam not recently a while ago so literally it was a very smart way they did this it was so low budget they had a camera and they would place the camera and everything was done with hand it was literally those were real toys and they would literally have the toys like moving and they'd be like, Oh, we got to do this. And then when you, the reason they always like broke or like got hit by something is because they would just throw them at like a tree <laughs> like or throw them and then run them over with a car. Like that's, they literally did it all with their hands. Like it was all puppetry. I love that. It wasn't that, even stop motion though. It was literally like they were holding it like this and like going back and forth like that while they talked. Yo, and then they just talked in the background. It, it was a, okay. Mm. That's a great that's way to make a the, show. Oh, bro. And see, that's why Ren and Stimpy, I could never, that's why now as an adult, I can't, I don't like Ren and Stimpy. Because like if Kablam, if I can still like Kablam and Kablam was so low budget, mm-hmm. but it still was done well enough. You know what I'm saying? By the way, Kablam has a, a, a killer killer intro song maybe we'll try to uh, i'll try to find it and i could put it up top somewhere killer intro song for, it's like a ska song it's like it's so good it's so good i have to go listen to it again it's been a while like kablam I'm just sure popped in my head 
I'm sure it has. Yeah. That stuck with me too because you can't find the episodes anywhere. Mm-mm. They're like they're impossible to find. Hey, man, lost that, media. It's from the early '90s. I mean, that might be one of those Mandela effects. No, it existed. Oh, okay. I was it about existed. to say. It <laughs> about definitely to say. existed. I just I told you say, I watched a documentary I, on it. I was about to say, did I? Did I finally? Did I finally come across a Mandela effect? No, 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 no. That actually, that legitimately happened. So, Man. do we have any more? I'm not putting Robot Chicken on there because I just thought about it, but it's definitely not in the top five. So, there's no reason to even write it down. Are there oh, any more? Wait, 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 wait. I might have found a way you can watch Kablam. Well, they might have the episodes now. Yeah, they got the episodes, I think, on Amazon Prime, YouTube, Paramount Plus, Roku. So, they just, they just put them out then because yeah. they weren't, they, but lost media from the 90s isn't really lost anymore it just never was released on like dvds or vhs so nobody had it unless you record it on your tv so it was considered lost but now they're putting everything now with streaming services everything's available so it was lost at one time do we have any other shows that we could think of off the top of our heads before we research um i think that's i mean i think just by looking at this i know what the top five is going to be can I say one more thing? One more thing sure. bad about Family Guy that I didn't yeah. like. You could say as many things bad as about Family Guy. Um, what made me be even more disappointed was when they doubled down on their terrible show with making another one. The Cleveland Show. But the Cleveland Show had a bomb intro. My name is Cleveland Brown, and I am glad to see I'm back in my own. Now the guy that that played Cleveland won't do it anymore because he was a white guy playing a black character. Oh, wow. So he won't do it anymore. It's like, it's like the Apu thing. This, This is my opinion on that. It's like the Apu thing. They've been doing it for 20 plus years. At this point, him stepping down, what does that really mean? Like they're both at the end of their ropes anyway. So for yeah. the last season, they're stepping down. What is that? The only reason they did it is because the that the uh, that documentary that talked about how um, Frank Azaria plays a poo, a white guy playing an Indian clerk, like how like they're saying like it's racist and stuff like that. Which maybe this is not a good opinion to have. I don't think it is. Like, you're an actor. You're supposed to be playing not yourself. Like I don't think it's racist either. I mean, I, I can't lie. I kind of like the way if Cleveland was more urban, it'd be weird. I think um, they play they play what they're supposed to do very well, but they're actors. Yeah, like, like yeah, like it's everything it's is conversation for a different day. But it's it, it happened when all the other. I mean, the reason comedy's oh, yeah. dead right now is it's the same thing. I mean, you you can't get a Judd Apatow made now because it's just. No, no one can carry a comedy like they used to be able to. Now every comedy has to be very deep, very PC, and it's impossible to make them. So yeah. that's a whole nother story, though. That's like a whole – I don't think yeah. we have enough time left on this podcast to go through this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we can't make fun of ourselves anymore, which is terrible. Yeah, it's awful. But I think based on what I have written down, I know what the top five is going to be. Okay. So South Park is going to be number one. I think that's clear cut, right? Now, does this family guy fall into number two? Now, remember, it's not our opinion on the show. It's the top five shows that we watched as kids that we shouldn't have. Yeah, because that was I huge. think it has to fall into number two. <clears throat> Simpsons is three. Simpsons is three. Yep, yeah, we're in the same thing. Well, that's what I was going to say next. Should the Simpsons be two and family guy be three? Because... In the '90s, The Simpsons were the the okay. very risky. Keep it a like, bean. I right. if you want to keep it a bean, I think Simpsons is one, and South Park should be two. The only reason I think South Park should be one is because in the '90s, The Simpsons was like very risky and it like gave bad attitudes, and then South Park came in and dialed that up to a thousand. Yeah, it did. It like, <laughs> like The Simpsons it was so risky, did. and then South Park came out, and Simpsons became a family show. Like <laughs> that's how Which bad is South what, Park was. Think, okay, just think about this. The Simpsons is literally could be considered a kids show now. I know. Well, it's got dumbed down big time. 
The Simpsons was only good for about the first six or seven seasons. I can do a whole deep dive on The Simpsons. Maybe we could do – if you want, I could do a quick deep dive on The Simpsons for you. I am a huge fan of The Simpsons. You I know used what? to own all the box sets of The Simpsons, and it, it took a dive. Give a short one, and then we'll let you go on one – on one, we'll both yeah, go we'll, in we'll on. A, we'll do a new ep- We'll do a different episode where we can talk about this stuff. Yeah, because then I'll do the Boondocks, and you can do Simpsons. Sounds good. But um, the Simpsons was good for like the first seven seasons. There was a, an episode in like season seven about Principal Skinner, and and um, uh, Nerdstalgic, which is a YouTube channel, does a really good, really good video on this. Um, but if you're a big fan of the Simpsons, you you know this episode. Um. That's Principal Skinner is in Principal Skinner. Like he's an imposter of the real Principal Skinner and the real one comes back and no one likes him. So they just kind of like exile him from Springfield and the fake one just becomes the real one again. And ever what? since then, it seemed like they ran out of stories and like, there's a couple of good episodes after that, but it's not like you're not like one of my favorite episodes of the Simpsons is the putt off, which is when, um, Flanders kid and Bart like are putting to like basically the fathers are, want them to win, but the two are just like godly mini mini golfers. It's just such a good concept, such a good story. I really love that episode. There's a lot of really great episodes. I mean, the the, the monorail episodes in the first seven seasons. I think it's like season three. It's just so great. It's such a great episode. Um, but they just fell off. And I mean, think of it. That se- season seven was in like 1996, I think. But you're talking we cut, almost 30 years ago. <laughs> we got to like cut still on TV. Slack, We got to cut Simpsons and Family Guy some slack. They gave us heat for like, well, Simpsons gave us heat for like 10 years. Let's yeah. be real. Sim- yeah. Family Guy gave us heat for like five, six so can say, we really yeah. be mad? I would say can we Family really Guy's be mad peak. that they ran? You I would know say what Family saying? Guy's peak is between seasons two and like five, four maybe. Because season one's pretty good, but that's the one. Because <laughs> Family Guy, it's famous for going on, getting canceled, and then Adult Swim picked up all the reruns and it came back and was just a monster after mm-hmm. that. I would sure say was. probably two to, two to five, somewhere between two and five would be their peak. South Park, I would say their peak was probably in the middle of their run. I think their best episodes to me are like towards season seven through 11. That's when you get trapped in the closet. That's when you get, um, oh, what's the other one? That's really good. That's when you get the the Mormon episode. That's when you get the Scientology episode. The, that, oh. I think that was between like season seven and 10 or 11, I think. Which one was Coon and Friends? Because that's my favorite South that's, Park episode. That's, that's in, in, in that run somewhere. It's near that. I don't know if it's in that run, but it's near that Ooh, run. Coon and Friends was so funny to me. Imagination Ooh. lands in that run. I'm pretty sure. Like that's. I think was that the one was with the Ninja after. Stars in that one too. I believe so. Yeah, that might have yeah. been a little earlier though. That might have been like season five or six. But in that middle run, because they're in mm-hmm. season like twenty something now. So you're talking from one to tw- let's say twenty two. Oh, you know, God. seven through f- six through f- like twelve is their middle run, and I think that was their peak. That's when you get a lot of the best episodes of. That's when they had a really that really just nasty. I can't remember the episodes. They had a really nasty run. They had like trapped in the closet, the little league episode. Like oh, through this episode. run, the little league episode's great with um with the bat dad, mm-hmm. and like he fights the bat. It's and it's just the Rocky oh, parody God. the whole time. It's so oh, good. It's so good. Oh my God! All that rake league baseball, man. Oh my God! So if 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 we went with that, four would probably, in my eyes, be the Boondocks, and five would be Futurama because Futurama was definitely mm-hmm. not for kids, but it also. No. Was it was it a little wasn't risque, hard. but it wasn't it was like risque. bad. No, yeah, we got to give some love to Futurama. By the way, we haven't I talked at Futurama. all about Futurama. Okay, I let's talk about loved Futurama. Futurama, and I think the ending of Futurama, which now it's coming back, so it wasn't really the ending, but uh, the I'm ending happy. of I'm Futurama, the ending of Futurama, the last episode is um, Fry is going out with Leela, and I don't remember. If, they, he's asking to marry her or if they were just trying to have a perfect date and he asks her to meet they must have just been going on a date and 
he asks her to meet him at the top of this building, right? And they go to the top, and she's a little bit late, or she was just on time, but his watch was fast or something like that. So he's like, I'm going to, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm ending it all. And he goes off the building and he sees her. But earlier in the episode, he gets this button where he can reverse time, like in a couple seconds. So he's jumping and he sees her. So he tries to reverse time, but time only reverses him to when he first jumped. So to stay alive, he keeps going in this loop. And then eventually they break the button and the only two that are trapped in like the part where the button doesn't work are Fry and Leela and everyone else on in the entire universe is frozen in time. Mm. And it just shows them going through their life with no one else around them. And it's just so, it's so well. And at the very end, they, they get married and they live this long life. And at the very end, the professor finds them in time and was like, we can bring you back to the, to, to the beginning, but you won't remember anything that happened. Like none of this will, and they go, Fry goes, you want to go around one more time? And she says, let's do it. And they go. And that's how the series ends. It's so, so good. It's so good. It just gives you chills hearing about what it was. It's so good. But they, they were just so smart with a lot of stuff they did. And like, it was just, it. it's a great show. It is a great, just great characters. And they, they, they told the line of being risque and too much. Like, yeah. because there's a lot of points where Bender could have just wild out and mm-hmm. he didn't. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, okay, they're kind of tame. I kind of. Yeah, there's never really any episodes that you're like, oh my God. It's not like South Park where you're like, if like, <clears throat> if you want your kids to watch South Park, you can. But there are episodes mm-hmm. you're like, that one needs to be skipped. Like, if they watch this episode, it will mess them up. Same with Family Guy. And this, I don't think the Simpsons, I think they're Futurama is definitely on the Simpsons level, but that makes sense. Cause they're by the same creator, but mm-hmm. yeah, Futurama was definitely an adult show that I really love. I actually was thinking of doing a Futurama rewatch very, that very might soon. Be, that might be good. I like that. I think cool. it's only on Paramount though. I think that's why I didn't do it because I don't own Paramount. No, so if somebody listening wants to shoot me their Paramount so I can watch Futurama, that'd be I'll definitely appreciated. How at you boys. <laughs> So we could do that. But so our top five is uh, South Park, Simpsons, Family Guy, Boondocks, Futurama. I think that's a good list. I think that's a very good list. I think um, that really does make sense because South Park definitely has to be one. Simpsons, I think, is two because of the cultural impact it had. Family Guy's three, again, cultural impact. But another thing with Family Guy, Family Guy got bigger later so like we weren't really kids anymore when family guy was like i said my peak of family guy was middle school so we weren't really kids anymore when i was watching south park i was like legitimately a kid (laughs) like i was a kid i was not a young adult i was not mid-teens i was a kid um what was i gonna say boondocks 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 is right there with like Chappelle's show where it was just so that was another show so good I watched it as a kid it. and I shouldn't have watched it, but I'm so glad I did because like, it just, it, it makes uh, you understand cultures. You're not a part of even more or cultures you are a part of in your case, you know, like it yo, just, it, it's it, so good. I'm not. Okay. Like Dave Chappelle show, bro. Dave Chappelle was the man, bro. And I don't think people realize that. I don't think kids understand Dave Chappelle was the man. Like he is, he was the man. Probably one of the smartest comedians of all time, one hundred percent. One of the smartest comedians of all time, and people want him to bring back Chappelle Show. I do not. No, I do not. I don't want no. it to come back. I don't want him to do it again. Weird and woke. He'll come back weird. He He'll come back bad. He. I mean, he even on SNL, he's not. I mean, there's some well, good sketches, but not. They're not Chappelle be, Show sketches. He he can't be Dave Chappelle that we want no. him to. Be. The, the the first episode of Chappelle Show was the blind racist was it clayton bigsby that was the first episode first he couldn't even do that today people would flip out i mean if you've seen his stand-up and stuff it's very tame now it's still he still definitely takes shots he goes up and in on things but not like he used to yo like that's why that's why you was right that comedy is dead because you know me i like the i don't mind us making fun of each other when it no. comes to like entertainment, because it's like, because you know it's not real. Yeah, man, and it's you know just it's like... you know it's a joke, and that's that's the thing people don't understand it's a joke, and that's why, 
we get what we get. Yeah, we get, we get what we get. But I'm, that's why I'm saying the Judd Apatow era may have been the end of comedy. Like that may have been the end of the comedy era. Like there's still some funny stuff that comes out here and there, but it's not, yeah. it has to be sophisticated. It has to have more meaning. It can't just be super bad about a bunch of teens trying to hook up with girls and drink booze. Like obviously it had a deeper meaning than that. It was, you know, your friends are going away to college and you're not, and you're dealing with that loss. But in, at the end of the day, the main story is them trying to get booze so they can try to hook up with, with Emma Stone. Like, <laughs> That's literally what the movie's about. Like, it's but you just don't get that anymore. That? Didn't we what? all do that? I said, haven't we all done that before? But that's what I mean. But it's just like, you can't you can't make comedies about it anymore. But I think that was a pretty pretty fun episode. The list again, I just threw it in the garbage. But I think I do off the top of my head. Uh, South Park, yep. Simpsons, Family Guy, yep. Boondocks, Futurama. Yep. That's our top five. Hundred yep. percent. I think it was a good top five. So um, again, everybody. Have a good Thanksgiving. If you haven't already, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, TikTok, Schnabel Studios, S-C-H-N-A-B-E-L Studios. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube if you're listening to this on podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can listen to it on podcast. We're everywhere. Um, we definitely recommend going to like Spotify, though, if you want to watch, or YouTube if you want to watch. You can watch us on both of those. Um, but we are on every podcast thing you can find. Um have a good Thanksgiving. We're going to be back after Thanksgiving as well. We're going to have our, our villains um, from our superhero creation. So if you're interested in finding out who the new villains are, I believe that's what we're on, the new villains. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely come by and check that out. Kyle, you got any departing uh, thoughts or words you want to say to uh, the fans? Man. Um... Yeah, man, have a good Thanksgiving. Go watch some Boondocks. Go watch the first three seasons of the Boondocks. Go watch some South Park. Mm -hmm. Go watch the first four four seasons of A Family Guy. Or as I South, hit my South Park, by the way, has some good Thanksgiving episodes. If you're looking for Thanksgiving oh, they episodes, they do. They have some. They they have some good ones. I know the one at Plymouth Rock is is pretty. Uh, Plymouth Point, no Plymouth Rock. I think that's right. That's a pretty solid one. So they, they have some solid stuff. And obviously have a good Thanksgiving and enjoy your family or friends or whomever you're celebrating with. Enjoy some football. If that's your if that's your thing. If not, just watch the parade in the morning and then stuff your face until you fall asleep. Whatever one you want to do, we, we're highly supportive of it over here at Sketching Up. But for Kyle Scott, Chris Schnabel, we wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening. Join us again next week. We will see you next time here on Sketching Up. Boom.